Well, hello there, my dear friends. Welcome back to the Scott Reed Project. Now, two days ago, I get a phone call from a guy. He said, Scott, I got you one. I said, cool, where are you? He said, I am in a van in a car park. Very clandestine. So I rock up to said car park, meet the gentleman in question, and he gives me this. Just have a look at this magnificent fish. Now this is a Xander, they do grow bigger than this, but this is a predator. You know, fantastic fish, great to eat, but I tell you what, it's a killer. Now if this was an aeroplane, it would be an F-22 Raptor. I mean, it's deadly, stealthy, absolutely untouchable and fast as bilio. I mean, it is pretty much, like I said, a killing machine. Now, what I'm going to do with this beautiful fish is I am going to fillet it and we will cook it. But I just want you to take in what a beautiful thing that is. You know, just like pike, bass, all those spines along the back, armor plated, gill plates, you know, and just look. If you can see in there, just look at those teeth. Can you make those out there? Hey, hey. Pure bread killing machine. Right, so what we need to do then, what I want to do first is cut off the head, fillet it, cut it into portions, and of course, cook it. Right then, what we're going to do then, using poultry shears, I find is the easiest way. We're just going to go up and take off the dorsal fin and all those spines, just gently working our way along. Man, they're tough. They are really tough. These are actually brand new poultry shears. And then we go down, take off that one. So just taking off all the fins, easy as. Just take those ones off there. I mean, these are built to last. I mean, I'm having trouble getting through <laughs> with these bad boys. But like I said, it's got no natural predator really, maybe the pike. And I'm just gonna take off the head. Let's have a look at that again. How wide the mouth goes. Nothing is getting out of there once it gets in. Right, just gently with the heel of your knife, just go along. So we're looking to just connect with the top of the backbone, as you can see, just letting the knife glide along. Nice and steady. And then just easing it over the rib cage. I'm going to go here out of the tail and then just gently, I will show you in a moment, just easing it over the ribs. You can see the rib cage appear in there. You get into the belly flap, the end of the ribs. I mean, I'm not too fussed about the belly. I just want those lovely fillets. So there's one. Now, another way, if you're not sure about doing it like that, gently over the bones, another way I will show you. It's not as clean, but I think it's one you'll most probably, if you're new to this, be into. So I'm just going to, again, follow in the backbone. Come out again at the tail, just like that. And just taking it up to where the rib cage starts. Flip it round, put your knife in and make sure it's facing down the bone. And then just across the backbone. 
like I said this is not the cleaner method but some of you might find it easier than my first method and then you can just gently skim out those rib bones there and then as you know I like to I'm just going to straighten it all up so there is the conventional way of filleting a fish and that is the cheats way but as you can see not as clean but if you haven't done it before this is the way forward and especially with Xander you know fishermen hate it uh, I've spoken to a few fishermen they're going oh I've never had it to be honest I don't know how to to prepare it but this is the way it's a simple way and it works right then next we are going to just skin these and cut them into the desired portions so at the tail just knife get it horizontal hold the skin not the flesh move the skin and not the meat and you are left with a beautiful beautiful look at that that will rival anything Xander fillet so again horizontal holding the skin knife hardly any pressure you are jiggling it letting bloody fly have a look at you cheeky bastard and there we have fillet number two so I'm just going to square it up then we're going to get what obviously a couple of nice loin fillets and a couple of tails well there you have it then that's our Xander skinned and filleted we're left with these four fantastic fillet our two tail ends our two loins now the beauty of this sander with it being small is there is hardly any pin bones in it and the ones that are there are not worth troubling about. Now in my head I can see this a beautiful beer batter. I mean this is a wonderful meaty firm fleshed fish just like a cod or a haddock and to me uh, I've tried this many times before it blows them out the water so you know we all love cod and chips. So I'm thinking Xander and chips. Right then, let's make up the batter and start cooking these. But what a beautiful, beautiful looking fillet. And as you can see, you know, it's so, so fresh. It's absolutely perfect. And I must say to my friend, Paul Cooper, Coops, not Coops the gamekeeper, Coops the fisherman. Cheers for this, mate. You are a diamond. Right, let's get that batter made. Well, my dear friends, before we cook the wonderful Xander, I just want to let you into a secret. So my 10 year old daughter, she loves fish and chips. You know, your battered fish from the chippy, cod, haddock. And she says, dad, when you've cooked that, I will try it. And I said, look, babe, do you want to come on camera and do it? She said, yeah. The thing is, I haven't told her it's Xander. She thinks it's cod. So I'm going to cook it up. We'll get it on camera and see what she makes of it. Who wants to have a bet with me? She'll go, oh, that's amazing, Dad. And then I'll say, it's out the river. She'll be like, oh, I could be wrong. Never mind. What an evil, evil parent. Ah, 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 ah. Okay, then, on to the wonderful beer batter. Don't get a better beer than that. Okay, so there are, like every recipe, hundreds and hundreds of variations you know some chefs say self raising flour some say plain flour some say half plain half corn flour which is what I'm using some say self raising and rice flour Gordon Ramsay being the one I mean why complicate it why over complicate everything it's easy we're just making a batter and consequently Gordon actually puts vodka and honey in his batter I mean don't get me wrong, the man's a millionaire, but it just seems like over-egging the pudding. So, the ratio I have gone for then, 50 grams plain, 50 grams of corn flour. I'm going to put in, what is it, a couple of teaspoons of baking powder. Then I'm going to add a decent pinch of salt. Get that in there. 
and then just some pepper, just some nice pepper. And then, sieve it. Couldn't be easier. Next, we want some good beer. Obviously, you can use lager, pale ales. I'm using this. This is a serious brew. Mm. It's a dirty job, isn't it? So just making a well in the middle, we want to add about 150 mil. Don't know what that is, but you don't want it too thick, you don't want it too thin, and get your whisk in. I'll tell you what, worst maracas I ever bought. So just get it in there and get mixing it. You want it quite thick. So you just want to basically eyeball it I think we nearly cracked it straight away there. Job's a good one. Hmm. Right, we'll cover that and let it rest for an hour. Wonder what I'm gonna do for an hour. Okay then, so, we've got a little bit of flour in a bowl. We've got some salt and pepper in there. We've got our lovely fillets of fish. Rihanna? Okay, babe, are you looking forward to trying this fish? Yeah. Good girl. Right, come back in five minutes, baby. So, where were we? Right, dredging our fish. A light coating, a light dusting of seasoned flour. I got my fryer set to 190. Obviously, if you want to go old school on top of the hob, now, there is hardly any bones in this fish, which is brilliant. So, get our batter, dip our fillet in, and let the excess drip off. And we just gently lower it in to the fat, just like that. Repeat with the other one. Do them in twos. Keep them warm in the oven. These should cook in about five, six minutes. Lay that one in, laying away from you. Okay, so when they're nice and golden brown and looking a bit like that, oh yes. Took a while for that temperature to get rocking, I must admit. Not very impressed. Right, what I need to do then is just drain those a little on some kitchen paper, keep them in the oven nice and warm, but just have a look. Oh, I can't wait to get into it. Gotta be malt vinegar. Fat, get it on. Then a bit of lemon, just to cut through that fattiness of that batter. Now that beer batter is nice and thin. You know, sometimes you go to the chip shop and it's absolutely thick, soggy. Just gonna give it a bit of salt and I'm gonna get stuck in. Now obviously you can serve this with whatever you want obviously traditionally mushy peas but I'm just gonna keep it nice and simple Let's just have a look at that. How's that looking? Hey? Oh can't wait for this come on. Nice thick firm flakes get on my fork oh absolutely superb just look at that hey for a river fish hey then babe do you want to try this yeah go on then pick it up with your hands just be real about it mm. that's good mm. nice 
no bones. What fish do you reckon that is? Cod. No. What is it? See that river over there? Mm -hmm. Comes out of there. Are you serious? Yeah, it's a Xander. Nice. Mm -hmm. Eat that then. Rest assured, folks, we don't normally eat with our hands. But this is daddy and daughter time. This is lovely. I mean, superb. Good ear, isn't it? Mm. Oh. <laughs> There's enough salt on there. Oh, I'll try that. Huh? Try that one. Yeah, get the grease in your hair. That is all that's left out of those four fillets, that little bit there, and that ain't gonna last long. It really is a truly wonderful, wonderful fish. And out the river, it's absolutely superb. So if you've enjoyed what you've seen here today on the SRP, please click subscribe when my face comes up down here. Come on people, join the movement. Also find me on my social media, on my Facebook, Scott Ree and the Scott Ree Project page. Get on there, click follow. Also on my Twitter at the Scott Ree Project. And also if you'd like to check out my Patreon, the links are in the comments. Go on there if you're feeling generous. Do, if you don't, it's cool baby. We're not gonna fall out. So until next time then, a big thank you to Rihanna, my beautiful daughter for being a good sport. Fair play to her, she loved it even after I said what it was. Good girl. And also to Paul Cooper Coops, the fisherman, not the gamekeeper, who got me this wonderful fish. Absolutely brilliant. Cheers, Coops. And that's it. That's all she wrote, baby. And I'm having that bit. See you again. Take care.